Continuing on to section 5 of chapter 3, write an equation for each line in slope-intercept form and standard form, if possible. So here's where we get a chance to use all those formulas, standard form, slope-intercept. Uh, a little later we may have to do slope, and then a new formula that we may not have mentioned yet. It's called the point-slope form. I've had this on the board, and here it is. It is y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. Now notice if you have one point and you know the slope, you can actually put it into slope-intercept and from that convert it to standard form. So let's take a look. And I'm going to review a little bit too as we go through this. We want a vertical line through this point. Now a vertical line formula is x equals a. And that was formula 6. Now, in an ordered pair, which of these two coordinates is A? And the answer is 5. So our formula here for this one is going to be x equals 5. It's just that easy. How about a horizontal through that same point? Well, the horizontal formula is y equals b which of these two items is the B? Yes, I'm pointing to it. So this is Y equals 2. So you don't have to go into any special mode or anything or use this formula up here. These just come from this and this we said was formula 5. Now how about a line that is parallel to X equals 4? and it goes through the origin. Well, if it's parallel to x equals 4, it's this formula. So this would be x equals 0. These are parallel lines going through 4, going through 0. Now a line perpendicular to this, but going through this point. Well, a line that's perpendicular to this formula would have this formula. If this is a vertical line, the per perpendicular line is uh, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, so it would go through this point. Now we get a little more technical here, but there is sort of a giveaway right here this is your y-intercept. Remember, that would be 0 comma b. Anything in that form is the y-intercept. So we just have to figure out the slope here. Now, once we find the slope using these two points in formula 3, the slope is negative 1 third. We put it in slope-intercept form with our slope negative 1 third and our y-intercept 5 right there. Now, we could go and convert all these to standard form, but that would be tedious. Uh, and I'm not going to take that much time to do these. Now, here's a tricky one, because you have fractions, but the slope eventually becomes a negative 7 thirds, and you're probably going to have to put it in this formula up here. But let's use that formula up there now for number 7. Here we have y minus this 5 equals our slope, a negative 3 fifths times x minus 1. So once I have it in 
point slope form, my 1 goes there, my 5 goes there. There's my slope. I'm going to get rid of all the fractions by multiplying each term by 5. So 5y minus 25 equals, now the 5's cancel out, a negative 3 times x, negative 3x, negative 3 times a negative 1 is a positive 3. I'm going to transpose the negative 3x to the other side, the negative 25 to the other side, and now I have this is in standard form. Now if I wanted to find it in slope intercept, I would transpose that back and then uh, do that and then divide everything by 5. But I wanted to show you that technique at least once. Now I'm going to clear this up here so I have a little more room to work. Now in number 8, we have this point, but we want a line that's perpendicular to the y-axis. So let's make a little graph to see what they're talking about. Now there's the y-axis. A line that would be perpendicular to that would be a horizontal line, and that formula of a horizontal line, oh, uh, let's see, to the y-axis, yep, is going to be y equals, and this is the point we wanted to go through, y equals 3. Now, this would be perpendicular to the y-axis as we would draw it, 1, 2, 3, would be a line like so, perpendicular to the y-axis. And again, here they're checking to see if you know these various equations. And then here it's through that same point, but parallel to the y-axis. Now if we want a line that's parallel to the y-axis, that would be a vertical line and that would go through the x coordinate. So there is one that is parallel now. At 2. Now here it's going to be through this point, but perpendicular Again, you want something that's perpendicular, but now this time to the x-axis. Well, something that's perpendicular to the x-axis is a vertical line. And the one that is the vertical line is uh, x equals a at negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there's that one. I'm off a little bit, but I think you catch on. This is perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay, let's raise it up. Now, another way to look at this, if you're not sure, we're going to plot 5 comma negative 3. So there's 5, there's negative 3. Now, we want a line that goes through that point, but it's parallel to the x-axis. So that line is going to look like so. What's the equation of that line? y equals negative 3. It's a horizontal line. OK, so substituting this into our point slope form, y is a, a 3, so negative 3 x is a 5, so the op... Oh, I think that's where we had a little error there. Glad I caught that, and that's how you have to go over your work. So this is a negative, because the negative is part of that formula. So the opposite of a negative made this a positive 5, 
this comes over as a positive 15 and then this checks. I found a little error in another place so I'm keeping an eye out for that. Okay, uh, 13 is sort of tedious with these decimals in there. So when you do get it in standard form it's this and then I'm going to show you how to solve it for y. Up here I've written it again. I'm going to divide every term by 3. This gives us a 2x which is our slope and our y-intercept is a negative two-thirds. So again if you have it in standard form you can solve for y put it in slope-intercept. If you have it in slope-intercept form here we would multiply everything by 3 and that would take it out of this form and put it back into that form once you bring your x term over to the other side. That's what they've done. Okay, now this one is, they stuck in an easy one because here they're telling you the slope and they're telling you the y-intercept. So this is just going to be y equals a negative 1, we don't write, x plus 4. And to put it in standard form, just bring the x over, which would be x plus y equals 4. Now here you have to find the slope, but once you find the slope, there's the y-intercept. So again, for this one, we have the negative 1 and 4 is my y-intercept. Now here's another with y-intercept for number 15. So once we figure out the slope and the slope comes out to be uh, 9 over 1, there's our slope and there's our y-intercept. And this one, again, once you figure out the slope, it's going to go through the origin. So there is no y-intercept as such. So it's going to be 0 minus 2, 0 minus a minus 9, which makes it a plus. Our slope is a negative 2 ninths. And there's for number uh, 16. And to put it in standard form, uh, multiply everything by 9. So you now have uh, the nines over here cancel out. So this will come over to this side as 2x plus 9y equals 0. Again, there's lots of stuff. If I did everything, this tape would run too long. We're already on 13 minutes. But again, if you have any questions, bring them in the math uh, zone. Now for number 17, here we have two ordered pairs. We're going to have to use the slope formula. And by the way, the slope comes out to be 4. And then we use formula 4, the point slope form. Use either one of these pairs, and that'll bring you to this. To put it in standard form, you bring this over to the other side. In number 18, again, you're going to use formula 3 to find the slope. Then formula 4 with either one of these sets. If you use these, both of them, your x and y become positive, remember. And this one, you get fractions. To put this in standard form, you would have to multiply everything by 8 to get rid of all the fractions and then bring this term over to the other side. Now here they're saying through the origin, and we know this is the origin. So it would be this point and the origin, find the slope, and the slope is uh, 2 over 4, which becomes 1 half, and there is no b, because it's going through the origin. And here they've identified it as the y-intercept is negative 6, 
you have to know to put it in that form. The x-intercept is negative 2, 0. Find the slope, which happens to be a negative 3. And then there is your y-intercept right there. Okay, well, we tried to keep it under 15 minutes. We ran a little bit over. This is, you know, the testing to see where you are in Chapter 3. And good luck.